Hope everybody's having a good week. Thank you for joining me. Tonight we actually have a win. Get to that a little bit later. Let's get started. Wow, it's been a heck of a week, huh? So many things are going on. It was hard to choose uh, just uh, a couple topics here. But let's see what our headlines are for tonight. Number one, sexy school run. Yeah, this one uh, This one here is almost one of those, uh, of those classic cases. Let's take a look here. Mom explains why she's wearing revealing clothes to pick her kids up from school. Revealing clothes to pick up her kids from school. All right, let's go. <laughs> A mom from, from England with over 136,000 followers on, on TikTok who posed getting ready with me, GRWM videos, is defending her right to wear what she wants even during school pickups. Strawberry Hayes. That cannot be her real name. Clearly prides herself on her fashion sense, regularly creating content, uh, content featuring herself dressed in her curated vintage outfits. In her videos, Hayes holds up items of clothes she found at vintage shops, describing the brands she's wearing and the style she's aiming for. Her post on TikTok shows her dressing up in revealing clothing to get ready for the school run. In one video, Hayes is seen wearing a gold crop top with black flares decorated with a gold celestial pattern. She describes her hair as MILF hair before putting on a furry hat to finish off her look. Quote, I feel so beautiful and classy and milfy, she says, as she poses for the camera. Let's just listen to a little bit of this here. It for like literally two pounds. It doesn't have a tag on it, so I can't tell you the brand, but we're gonna style an outfit around this. I cannot begin to describe to you how much I fucking love puffy sleeves. It's so. Okay, wait a second now. Beautiful, I love this. She's not pausing this, but she's wearing. Ow! A bit of fucking gloss. I got these trousers from a charity shop. They are originally from ah. Boohoo and they have these gold designs on them, so I thought they were perfect. Obviously, I'm going to wear my gold pointy toe heels. These are the only gold Obviously. shoes I own, and they are just fucking fabulous. I put on these black and gold clip on earrings and this beautiful necklace I got in a charity shop with this floral design. I've quickly done this like mum hair. I love a MILF hairstyle, and I'm going to wear this fluffy hat. Then I'm going to wear these black elbow gloves. Everyone's always asking me, don't I get cold? It has literally been so warm here for this time of year. Also, I speed walk everywhere, so I'm always breaking a sweat. I play Boy Bonnie handbag just because it's... Okay. If that was my mother and she showed up to my school looking like that, I, th I think I would make sure I take the bus every day. I, I would run the other way. It's a neutral color. It's black. It matches. Nice and easy. And this is the fit. I love this one so much. I normally stray away from gold, but I've been loving it lately. I feel so beautiful and classy and milfy. Slay, bitch! Okay, I love you. Seriously. Seriously. If she showed up, I, I, I would think I would die of embarrassment as a, however old her children are. She doesn't say how old they are, but I can't imagine that she really thinks that is attractive. I really can't. Wow. Uh, let's continue here for a second while I try to digest all that. The caption on the post reads, Sorry, but I'm slain lately. She utilizes the hashtag MumTuck, School Run, and Maxi... I guess that's supposed to be Millis Fashion. Okay, sure. In other videos, Hayes puts on a sheer lace bodysuit with matching sheer lace bell bottoms. It's kind of giving share. It's kind of giving share, she says, after she dresses. Wow. Her beige underwear and white bra are visible underneath the sheer outfit. I am sure that all the uh, other moms love this. Let's see if it shows anything that she's doing here. I won't play the audio on it. Let's just see. And don't you just love all the tats? Look at all the tats. There we go. A sheer bodysuit. 
Wow. If I was the principal, I wouldn't let her on the school grounds. That's all. That's all I can say about that. Uh, she finishes her look with green and white, with a green and white blazer, white platform sneakers, and a fur headband and oversized sunglasses. "Quote: I really like this one," she says. "I feel like a winter housewife." Winter. It's sheer, and this is what this is what gets me. It makes no sense. Her choices. I mean, her fashion sense, in my opinion. I'm not a fashionista, is uh, sorely missing, if you will. Sorely missing on this. But showing up to school like that with children, picking up your own children, that has just absolutely no respect for anybody else. She doesn't have any respect how the other parents feel. Um, you know, if kids are not brought up... Uh, if they're brought up maybe a little too conservative, they might freak out on something like that. But I mean, that's just, that's unacceptable. That is unacceptable. Have a little common sense, have a little uh, decorum and some, uh, and uh, some politeness towards other people. I mean, come on. That is just like, wow. Not to mention all the tattoos. I mean, okay, that's the biggest flag right there besides her dress wear, but yeah. Well, let's close this one off. The comments beneath her post are overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive. Quote, absolutely gorgeous as always, says one commenter. Quote, those trousers are so flattering on you, says someone else. You look like a Hollywood movie star. Are all these people on medication or off their medication? I wish I had your confidence on a school run. Believe me, you don't. Commented another follower. Body confidence is a massive issue in my area. Yeah, well, if you keep seeing her, I can see why. You always look amazing, but do you ever just put on leggings and a hoodie for the school runs? Please? Curious as to the reason why she decided to dress in this fashion when picking up her kids from school, many comments ended up asking. Hayes explains that she likes wearing revealing clothes to pick up her kids because kids don't think like that. Oh, right. They do now. Hayes addressed the issue of having an uh, issue of what to wear on a school run head on when a follower named Angelica posted the following question. What is your opinion on wearing revealing clothes to school pickup boobs and butt just started taking my girl and I'm stuck on what's okay. Her response. I really like this question. Hayes replies. I think it's really weird when people make make it weird that body parts are on show. I think it's really weird when people make it weird that body parts are on show. No, it's not. It doesn't even look good. Do you not have friends? Somebody give this woman an intervention. Kids don't think like that. Like I said, I don't know the age, but yeah. I'll agree. Kids don't think like that. They're just like, whatever. Because they're playing dress up while this mommy's playing dress up as well. But sooner or later, you got to do something adulting. Obviously, there are limits and boundaries. I'm not going to rock up the school run with nipple pasties on. Well, maybe not this week. But I feel like even if I did, it would it be so bad. Kids don't give a, you know what, she states. What about the parents? She keeps, if you notice, she keeps distracting all this to the kids. What about the parents? What if the parents don't want to see this? I mean, this is not even like a thought or it's just not a, it's not even on the top of her brain. I remember the uproar about my top that I was wearing that had a little bit of under boob and people just were going crazy. And I just thought to myself, do you guys cover your kids? Kids, I'll look. Do you guys cover your kids' eyes at the beach when there's a woman in a bikini? Right, but she didn't have underboob hanging out, probably. And all the tattoos and all the flair that this one has. While body autonomy is undeniably important, especially in the current uh, sociopolitical climate, the argument could be made that the beach and the schoolyard are too very different environments. I would agree. 
I grew up in a all girls house, so it was very nude, she explained. So maybe it's my upbringing. Yeah, but did you have a father in the house? Probably not. And my house is now very nude, she continues. But kids shouldn't be taught that body parts are bad or weird or naughty. Very true. I, I, I do agree with her on that point. But how about when things are appropriate? You know, at yeah, it's your house. You can do what you want. But now you're starting to force those values on other people. That's a big problem. With me, that's a big problem. Stop trying to force your thoughts and everything on everybody else. So what am I supposed to take from this that she's basically trying to force this on the kids? Like, hey, this is okay. It's all about the kids. What about the parents? The parents may not want their kids to experience this. It's up to the parents what they experience. Personally, she shouldn't be doing this, in my opinion. Should, school shouldn't let her pick up children looking like this because she's trying to make decisions for other kids' parents. They should be taught about appropriate nudity, about safe and unsafe touches, but they should not, as a kid, be uncomfortable around a woman in mini booty shorts. I have yet to meet a toddler who's friends with my son, Jasper, who's like, your mom's a, you know, backside is fat. Kids are not built like that. Uh, there's some kids out there that might say something like that, depending on the parents. She claims that growing up, she had friends who were allowed to wear crop tops because their stepfather was home. Okay, we know the statistics on that, right? When uh, stepfathers are involved a lot of times, not all the times, but there is a high, high chance of um, misconduct, shall we say, with the stepfathers and the daughters. And that's one of the reasons why if uh, your ex brings another man into her life, that you should be on top of it watching him like a hawk. It's just adults projecting their weird stuff onto kids and i really don't think it's inappropriate so says she she argues that bras versus bikini argument holds the same weight as hers only on the beach Hayes uh, delves deeper in explaining that she's autistic so i'm pretty black and white but i never got the whole thing like wearing a bikini top is out Wearing a bikini top out is okay. Wearing a bra out is not okay. Even though they cover the same amount of flesh, they're just made out of different material. True, but a lot of times bras have very sheer spots on them where you can see right through them. And yes, I know there are some bikini tops that are designed that way, but it's a bikini top and it's not always sheer. Hayes does make a valid point in that bikinis and bras cover up the same areas of the body, yet we're socially conditioned to see the garments as very different entities. I just think if you don't, I just think if you don't think it would be appropriate on a beach, if you don't think it would be appropriate on a hot day, then it's not appropriate, she says in her final statement. While Hayes may be correct in her thinking that young kids aren't looking at adults' outfit in a sexualized manner, those young kids will grow into teenagers and their worldviews will inevitably changed and they'll be inevitably uh, influenced by this as well. Fashion is one way to express ourselves. People should be able to wear what makes them feel beautiful. Yet at the same time, the con context is key and maybe school isn't the right place for the bikini. Yes, I agree. The school is not the right place for the bikini or a lot of what she's wearing just because she wants to grab attention and this is what this is this is an attention grab right she's like challenging all the other moms in this and that's one of the big problems she's grabbing hey look at me look at me look at me give me the attention give me the validation and uh yeah that that's exactly what's going on here very very sad very much so all right our second topic today is carpenter's dream Oh, this one here you're going to love. Now, this one here I have particular interest in. 
uh, dealing with the fact that uh, the double standards a lot of times, not a lot of times, the double standards between women and women, when men and women getting sentenced in the courts. Charged with six felonies for a relationship with a male student. Lena Stewart, a 27-year-old agricultural ag, ag science uh, and, and woodworking teacher at Nixa High School in Nixa, Missouri, has been charged for carving out an intimate relationship with a 16-year-old male student. See what, she did, what the writer did there? Carving out? Yeah, anyways. Stewart was charged with six felonies, sexual conduct or contact with a male student, three counts, statutory sodomy, two counts, and statutory uh, bump and scrumpies is what they're saying. One count. She was also charged with a misdemeanor, sexual misconduct. Stewart was arrested on January 22nd and released on January 23rd on a $25,000 bond. I am very curious to find out if it was a male that was uh, convicted of the, or I uh, uh, can't say convicted yet, but accused of this, would they have the same outcome? I'll say no. According to court filings, Stewart and the student used a secret Instagram account to communicate. The investigation began December 7th as Stewart was putting on was put on leave and was um, and was sparked by the student's parents' concerns that she was spending too much time with Stewart. He was spending too much time with Stewart. The student was interviewed at the Child Advocacy Center in Springfield and disclosed that in October he met Stewart several times at a friend's house beyond the city limits. The first time they kissed and he undressed, and the second time they did the bump and scrumpies. The student said he felt pressured to continue the relationship and was worried that if he didn't, it could affect his grades. He had an A this year in Stewart's class. No kidding. We, we learned today that the charges have been filed against Lena Stewart, a teacher at Nixa High School. They already said that. A, uh, a spokesperson for Nixa Public School District said, We take any allegation of inappropriate conduct extremely serious. So when an allegation is made in December, the district followed policy and procedure and then placed Lena Stewart on administrative leave and will continue to follow board policy and procedures when addressing the situation. The district will be working with the appropriate authorities as they conduct their investigation and will cooperate fully with anything they need. Stewart is also a school leader for Future Farmers of America, a youth organization that's brought back to Nix School back in 2021. If convicted, the most serious charge, if, uh, I'm sorry, if convicted of the most serious charges, she could face up to seven years in prison, which I doubt she will get because that normally doesn't happen with females, even in this case here. But the interesting thing about this one, other than the fact that, uh, uh, that it's a woman this time. Okay, a woman is now uh, can, uh, that's what I'm looking for here, saying that a woman had an affair with a young male student. And I'm going to really keep an eye on this one. I want to see what happens here. I really do. I want to see uh, what happens in the court. I want to see what they determine is her punishment uh, and see if it matches any male counterparts that are out there. But I do find it interesting that, you know, we find uh, a lot less male teachers in schools now. Um, and a lot of times feminists will say that's a good thing because, you know, all males are predators um, type of a situation. But yet here we're having a female who's teaching class, woodworking of all things on this one here, and ag studies. And she's having an affair with one of her male students. So we'll keep an eye on this one. Um, most definitely, most people don't want to sit there and deal with that one because why? doesn't look so hot for females. 
on this one here. It just doesn't. I mean, I doubt she's going to get, I bet she, I, I'm, I'll put it, put a bit out here right now. I bet she gets three years and then she'll probably get some probation and then she'll be suspended from ever being a teacher in that state. And then she'll probably move to another state and continue on uh, teaching. And uh, maybe she'll straighten her life up. Maybe she won't. Who knows on that one. But uh, if, it, if it just follows the pattern that it normally follows, yeah, she's not going to hardly get anything on that whatsoever. To be continued. To be continued. And of course, our matrix update. We have our matrix update. And today... Our matrix update deals with the Supreme Court has a big question to answer. Why can't government just leave us alone? And I agree. Why can't government just leave us alone? Uh, I'm going to skip a little bit of the beginning of this one here because it just goes into a huge story and it's a lot of word salad. Let's just get down to the nitty and the gritty. Uh, link will be in the description if you want to read the, the opening to this, but it really doesn't have too much to do with the story. Uh, 303 Creative Designer doesn't support same-sex marriage, and that's her right. Yes, it is. A decade ago, Lori Smith founded a design studio specializing in graphic and web design. Understandably, she used her talent to create artwork and messages that she supports. With her Colorado firm, 303 Creative, she has supported children with disabilities, overseas mission, animal shelters, and veterans. She has also created websites dedicated to marriage, and that and this just won't do. Instead of simply leaving Smith alone, the, straight, the state tried to force her into creating artwork and messaging with which she disagrees. Colorado's anti-discrimination law forbids any business engaged in sales to public and any place offering services, facilities, privileges, advantages, or accommodations to the public from refusing services based on sexual orientation. So Colorado is basically has a law that says that if you are totally against something, you, it doesn't matter. You, you have to do what we say. Okay. This is no, <laughs> this is not right. Um, let me continue on with this, and then we'll talk a little bit about this here. Smith has LBG, uh, LBGTQ LMNOP clients, but does not want to promote same-sex marriage because it violates her beliefs. And because there are countless businesses that will create websites, no loving couples will be harmed by simply choosing another vendor. Exactly. In fact, they'll likely be happier supporting a designer who agrees with their views. Exactly. That's the whole point. That's what we're based off here in America. Just go choose somebody else. You know, why, why play the victim card? Why sit there and go after these people? Just go choose somebody else. No big deal. But instead, it seems like some people, especially the state of Colorado, wants to force people to do things against their belief. Why couldn't Colorado leave Lori Smith alone? Using the overbroad language of its state law, Colorado could force an atheist to design a church website, a kosher deli to create a Christian nationalist rally, or a Muslim advisor to promote a pulled pork barbecue restaurant. See how this gets ridiculous? Because maybe they had a great good intention when they started this law, but... Because, and I know why they do over broad language so they can interpret it. I understand that. But it's to the point now where it's got ridiculous where they can force people to do things against their beliefs. Was she doing any kind of hate speech? No. Was she speaking out against it? No. She said, simply choose somebody else. I do not support this in a public fashion. My right to do so as a business owner, that's the direction I go. But people can't leave it alone. Alternately, the state could have could just leave its residents alone. But when you want to control what other people do, think and believe, leaving people alone isn't an option. I know. I don't get that. 
Colorado isn't new to this type of activism. In 2018, it lost a Supreme Court case to Jack Phillips, a cake maker who held similar views against same-sex marriage. The state could no more force Phillips to support a gay wedding than force bakers to design cakes with anti-gay messaging. Again, there are countless cake shops enthusiastic to do business with anyone celebrating any type of wedding. Instead, the government targeted Phillips, even though no harm befell any customer. The only harm was Phillips losing a client. Exactly. But the state doesn't want to see it that way. The state wants to force you to do something. Now, let's say you had a business and you had contracts with the state. Then, yes, there's a certain amount of uh, regulation that might go with that. Okay. I understand that because it's, it's more of a state thing and to qualify for that state business yes you might have to fall within these guidelines of this type of a uh, of a law i understand that but these people obviously have nothing to do with the state a cake maker nothing to do with the state this design firm even though it doesn't say it but i bet you anything she doesn't have a state contract where she's doing websites for the state but yet they still want to sit there and force her against her will to do something. And uh, yes, I totally agree. I am totally against that. Do not let them step on the toes. Court case has a simple premise. This month, Colorado found itself back at the Supreme Court trying to defend its selective persecution of designer Lori Smith. From the tone of the questioning, the state expected to lose again. Free speech is for everyone. The government can't force anyone to say something they don't believe, 303's creative attorney, Kristen Wagner, said. Lori's decision to design a project always turns on what the mess uh, always turns on what the message is. That's awkward. Not who requests it. When she creates a graphic design or website, she communicates a message consistent with her belief, and that's fine. She's su she's supporting what she believes. And those people are supporting her. Okay, this works. They're working together. This works. And the First Amendment protects everyone's, every American's right to express ideas without fear of government punishment. Exactly. In free speech, presumed innocent, oh, sorry. The premise of the case is simple. The government should not be able to force you to say things you don't believe. Americans should be free to express ideas, even if the government disagrees with them. Exactly. I keep saying that, but I just don't, I can't see, I can't see where the state lost its logic. Okay. They, they're sitting there talking about free speech, but yet at the same time, they're passing laws and trying to enact on these laws, um, trying to, you know, act on this and say, okay, no, 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 you must do this. I, it's just the incongruency just kills me. This breaks uh, see, this breaks the other way as well. Those who disagree with Smith or Phillips are free to avoid their business and suggest others do the same. No one should be forced to support a message they don't believe. A final note to politicians. In our diverse plur uh, pluralistic society, the wisest, wisest move is usually leave, just leave people alone. And that's what should be happening. Just leave people alone. But see, the government's even at the local levels, at this state level, are trying to edge their way in a little bit at a time, more and more and more. So if they lose this one, well, okay, look, they lost the cake uh, case, and now they're back again trying to go after a graphic designer. It's like they didn't, they didn't get the message the first time around. They didn't sit there and figure that, uh, hey, we, you know, we, we better just maybe rethink the way that uh, that we approach this. We need to rethink how we handle something of this nature. But no, they have to keep going. They have to keep testing the waters a little bit at a time, here and there, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and to the point that people will stop fighting it. And they'll just say, leave me alone. Okay, whatever. And that's the thing we cannot do. We can't let this continue on little bits of time, little bits here and there, because when you allow that to happen, then they take another step. They get a little closer, but then they don't back off. 
right? You can sit there and say, hey, 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 you're getting too close. You're breaking my personal space. Oh, okay, we're sorry. So then what happens then? They, but they don't, they don't back off. They stay there. And then they'll inch forward a little bit more. And you're, hey, stop. You're getting too close. Oh, sorry. But they don't back off. And this is especially the same thing with laws. We see this a lot with laws. Okay. The minute they take away any of your personal freedoms or set a law against you, they never rescind that law. If you don't think that's true, just look at the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act was enacted and it was supposed to be for a short time and it's still in place. And now they've just re-upped it and they've made changes to it and they've made it more restrictive. They've made it so that they can find out more about you more and more and keep that data. It was supposed to be rescinded by now. Okay. It's been, it's been 20 years, 23 years, but yet it's still there. More and more freedoms are being taken away. You will be forced to do things. The minute you sit there and think, eh, nah, that, you know, just let them be. I live my life. They live their life. Yeah, but they don't like that. They want to get more and more so they can feel more and more power, so they can feel more and more validated the way they think. So tell me what you think. Leave me, uh, tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, please like, subscribe, and let me know. I'm really interested. I want to see, uh, you know, what's happening in your neck of the woods. I know, are you noticing that they are taking away more and more freedoms or they're, you know, implementing more and more rules that may seem innocuous. They may not seem like they're a big deal, but then sort of maybe they're building up to something. I know it sounds conspiratorial, but it's not a conspiracy, uh, conspir <laughs> it's not a conspiracy once it becomes fact, as they start taking away a little bit here and a little bit there, more and more and more and more. Okay. Then you wake up one morning and you go, wait, 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 what happened? Well, you agreed to this. I didn't. Yeah, you did. You didn't say anything, so you agreed to it. And that's the way it works. All right, have a good night, and we'll talk to you soon.